Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Dick Powell and Joan Blondell in Model Wife. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Every trade develops its own slang terms, along with its technical terms. And in my trade, we have a slang word for pictures that turn out to be surprise hits. We call them sleepers. And we've got one tonight. The current universal picture, Model Wife. It gives you a chance to discover a hit for yourself, something Hollywood's genius for advertising doesn't let you do very often. This time, the surprise package contains a new and different... Dick Powell and Joan Blondell. Tonight brings Dick and Joan back to this microphone for their first appearance here together in almost five years. But Model Wife was worth waiting for. It's the story of a typical American phenomenon. The modern young business couple with their eyes clearly fixed on a shining goal. They hope that someday, and the sooner the better, they can raise a family. But in the meantime, their good-humored contest with the big city is a very real part of the American epic. Every husband, and I suppose every prospective husband too, will have his own definition of what constitutes a model wife. But discretion being the better part of valor, he probably keeps it to himself. I think they'll all agree on one point, though, and this is where Lux Toilet Soap makes a spectacular entrance. Tall or short, slender or not so slender, blonde, brunette or redhead, a wife should always look like a model wife. In fact, I think the ladies themselves are the first to insist on that. In Hollywood, screen close-ups tell any star or starlet a candid camera story that she cannot ignore. But if you don't happen to have a close-up of yourself handy, the mirror will do just the same thing. And in either case, the candid camera drama will have a happier ending if Lux Toilet Soap was part of the first act. And now for the first act of tonight's play. We raise the curtain on Model Wife starring Dick Powell as Fred Chambers and Joan Blondell as Joan Chambers. On New York's Fifth Avenue, an imposing storefront bears the imposing name J.J. Benson, Couturier. In simple English, that means Mrs. Benson sells dresses, but this is Fifth Avenue. On a normal day, J.J. Benson closes its chromium doors at 5.30 sharp, but this is Christmas Eve, and the employees in the full flush of Yuletide spirit have agreed to work until 10 p.m. or be fired. There goes the closing bell. Like a team of tired horses, the sales girls drop in their traces and stretch their aching limbs. Boy, what a relief. Another hour in the homicide squad would be after my feet for killing me. Mine murdered me two hours ago. I'm dead. J.J. Benson doesn't know it, but she's going to make her annual Christmas speech to a zombie. Good night, girls. Good night. And a Merry Christmas to you, one and all. Say, where do you think you're going? I'm preparing to saunter through the doors and join the merry throng. In brief, I'm going home. Good night, ladies. What makes you a privileged character, Mr. Chambers? Why don't you have to wait for J.J.'s Christmas speech? I celebrated my Christmas last week. Had Roosevelt move it up for me. Farewell, slaves. Just a moment, Mr. Chambers. Hmm? Oh, yes, Miss Keating. Mr. Chambers, no one is to leave the store until Madam Benson has addressed the personnel. Now, Miss Keating... No one is accepted from the rule. You're aware of that, Mr. Chambers? Yes, yes, Miss Keating. And I'm also aware that it's Christmas Eve. The snow is on the ground, and I can hear the jingle bells and the one-horse sleigh. In the age of automobiles, uh, come, come, Mr. Chambers. Now, listen here, Miss Keating. You've been J.J.'s secretary for two weeks, and you're getting to talk like her. You can tell her for me to make a recording of that speech, and I'll have it sealed in the cornerstone of Kaminsky's fish market. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> everybody at attention, please. Madam Benson is coming. Oh. On your feet, please. Oh, come, 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 everybody. My dear fellow workers, I shall not bore you. Mr. Everett, that happens to be my speech. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Madam Benson, a, a slip of the tongue. Uh, may I introduce your beloved employer? <coughs> Hold your hands, kids. Here we go. 
My dear fellow workers, ladies and gentlemen, I shall not bore you with a lengthy oration. My dear fellow workers, ladies and gentlemen, I shall not bore you with a lengthy oration. My remarks, as on previous years, will be short and to the point. First, last, and always, I believe in hard work. First, last, and always, I believe in hard work. Morning and night, asleep and awake, we must perform our duties like good soldiers. Morning and night, asleep and awake, we must perform our duties like good soldiers. Let us be inspired by... Miss Manahan. Yes, ma'am? Miss Manahan, you were discharged this morning. What are you doing here? I, I was just wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. I've worked with these girls five years. Three years as a married woman, distinctly against my rules. I can't afford to employ persons doing two jobs, mine and her husband's. You're no longer an employee. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let us be inspired now by the pride of knowing that our creations are worn by America's best-dressed women. May we all continue to work in harmony, and my sincere wishes for a Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs> and... And an industrious New Year. Oh. Merry Christmas. Anybody home? Why, Mr. Chambers, what a surprise. Good evening, Miss Keating. You're a little late, Mr. Chambers. I beat you home by 20 minutes. Yes, I know. I had to stop off and buy a Christmas present for my wife. Here you are. Merry Christmas. Oh, Fred, didn't we promise not to buy each other presents this year? That's not fair. Now, come on, come on, open it up. A man can buy a present for his own wife, can't he? What is it? Oh, oh, Fred, a bank. A stork bank? Oh, a stork, he's beautiful. Sure, sure, he sings, too. All you do is put a coin in his mouth. Watch. <laughs> oh, all that noise for a penny? Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I won 30 cents today in a crap game. Maybe our luck's changing. I had my own dice. Shame on you. But the stork won't object. Hand it over. Well, will you get a load of that voice? I asked him to give me a soprano. He's got a voice like a train announcer. The neighbors will know how we stand to a dime. Well, is it any disgrace to save for a baby? Why, darling, at this rate, it'll be no time before we can afford to have little Josephine. Joseph. Please, darling, if you have any influence at all, Joseph. Josephine? Joseph! Josephine. You wouldn't settle for twins, would you? Not at the present prices. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm tired. Open delivery. Oh, Fred, the mailman. Uh-oh. I have a feeling it's from your Uncle George. Why, Uncle George? Because the feeling I have is a sinking one. Open delivery. Well, anyway, it can't be for much money this time. Otherwise, he would have sent a telegram. Yeah, collect. Yes? Special delivery, Mr. Chambers. Seven cents postage due. It's Uncle George, all right. Let me have it, Fred. All right. Sorry to have to give you all this in pennies. I got paid today. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's have the bad news, darling. Well, we're pretty lucky. He only wants $35. What for? He says we wouldn't be interested. Well, if he wants $35, he will take $15. We'll give him $10. Can we afford even that? Get the account book, Fred. Let's see how we stand. I'm getting it now. Fred, was that you? Was that me what? Knocking on the wall. No, must be the average. Knock back. Woohoo! Mrs. Chambers. Yes, Mrs. Everett. Mrs. Chambers, Marlowe and I are expecting you tonight. We want you to come in and see our Christmas tree, Mrs. Chambers. All right. Thank you. We'll be there. What do they want? They want us to come in and see their tree. Oh, sometimes I wish these walls weren't so thin. I, I hear Milo every day at the store. I ought to get a rest at night. Why, oh, Fred, you like Milo. Sure, but I also like thick walls. Let me see the account. Here. Hmm. Baby fun budget book. We'll be lucky if we save enough to buy a cat. Now, let's see. Doctor, $150. Hospital, $100. Layette, diapers, and miscellaneous, $75. Cigars to pass out, $1. Oh, never mind all that. Uh, where do we stand? Well, we've deposited $235, less 37. What's 37 for? That's the unpaid balance on your appendix. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> now let's see. $10 to Uncle George. That leaves us $188. Oh, we're still awful short, Fred. How about starting the new year right and asking Law Benson for a raise? We'd better leave well enough alone. Just let us suspect we're married and we'll both be out of jobs. Oh, at this rate, it'll be ten years before we can have a baby. Someday I'll say to him, son, you could have been ten years old today instead of three if it had to been for your Uncle George. <laughs> According to the home economics page, you can buy a baby very nicely for $500. $400. $500. $400. What kind of law says we got to have that money? 
Babies are born every day without it, and they manage to grow into good men and women. Look at me. I thought you said you were tired. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want a baby because they, because they smell so nice. Mm. She'll be so soft and gentle and beautiful that, that people will look at her and say her, her parents must love each other very much. Yeah, smart people. <laughs> Madam Benson's office. Yes? Oh, at 4.30. Thank you, Mr. Carmichael. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to see Mrs. Benson. Do you have an appointment? No, I don't. You see, I'm... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Benson never sees anyone without an appointment. Oh, uh, you're new, aren't you? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Pretty, too. What did you want to see her about, please? Oh, nothing special. Just things. Well, who are you? What do you do? Nothing important. Oh, I do card tricks and stuff like that. Here, look. You see this half dollar? Mm -hmm. Presto, where did it go? Now don't tell me it's behind my ear. That's right, see? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. You do this sort of thing professionally? Sunday school treats and Boy Scout picnics? Oh, no, no, I learned it in the jungle. It makes friends with the natives. Yes, Madam Benson? Miss Keating, if my son comes, send him right in. Oh. What do you mean, oh, send him in? Are, uh, are you Mr. Benson? Mr. Ralph Vivian Benson? The Vivian was for a very rich aunt. Oh, you had an appointment with your mother, Mr. Benson. She, she wants to see you right away. Well, here I go. Well, Ralph. Hello, darling. Don't you darling me, you young wastrel, you... Thankless swap, you... shameless squander, irresponsible young fool. Give us a kiss, Ma. Get away. You smell like a 10th Avenue bar room. Park Avenue, darling. I'm still a Benson. A Benson should know the meaning of industry and dignity. Now, what about these checks? Three checks overdrawn in the last four days. You're slipping, Ma. Four and three days. Ralph Vivian Benson, there's only one thing left to do with you. You're going to work. Oh, not that. Right here in this office where I can keep an eye on you. But... Not a word out of you. Miss Keating, come in here. But, uh, do you think it's quite decent? Decent? Am I going to work? Making money? You won't be making much money, my boy. I'm going to pay you what you're worth. But, Mother, yes, listen... Miss Keating, this is my son, Ralph Vivian Benson. How do you do, Mr. Benson? Uh, let's keep Aunt Vivian out of this, huh? Miss Keating, my son is joining our staff. I'd like you to be a secretary until further notice. Oh, my secretary. The assignment merits a slight raise in oh, salary. Thank you. We'll put Mr. Benson in poor old Mr. Oglethorpe's old office. You mean old Mr. Oglethorpe's old office that, that Mr. Chambers has been using for a spring advertising layout? Mr. Chambers can move the spring advertising layouts back into his old oh, office. Oh, but Mr. Chambers is Spare very, your I... solicitude for Mr. Chambers, my dear. I doubt greatly that Ralph will offer him serious competition. In fact, if Ralph acts as a sort of catalytic agent to Mr. Chambers' efficiency, I shall be more than gratified. Get out, please. Yes, Madam Benson. This way, Mr. Benson. So long, Ma. See you payday. <laughs> Isn't Mother a dinger? A catalytic agent. Now, what do you suppose that is? It's a thing that makes something else work without working itself. Oh, it is? Well, under those conditions, I accept the job. Kitchen. What are you doing? Whipping up a souffle. Oh, I Fred. give up. I give up. I didn't mind when they fell down the first time. I didn't <laughs> mind the second. But now I give oh, up. Oh, darling. Give me that apron. Say, what's burning? I am. Once, just once these last few weeks, you might get home on time. Oh, please, darling, don't scold. Just before Mr. Benson left, he asked me to call his tailor about a ski suit. The line was busy for an hour. I almost went mad. Of course, Mr. Benson's rompers are more important than my dinner. Oh, Fred, please. What went wrong today? Come on now, you can't fool Ma. What happened? Uh, if your husband were half a man, he'd quit his job. J.J.? Yeah. I walked in this afternoon, gave the old, the old shrew an idea worth at least 100,000 a year. What was it? Well, I wanted her to sell perfume with her clothes. I had a whole campaign mapped out. Wear perfume to match your dress or gown. Idly, she asked me if I thought her customers smelled bad. Don't tell me you said they smelled a high heaven or something and got yourself fired. No, I couldn't even get past the first sentence. She mumbled something about my having too many ideas and not enough good ones and walked out. Oh, the pompous old bustle. Darling, it's a wonderful idea, and I'm proud of you. And someday she'll yep, see. Yeah, someday, sure. Fred, what's this on the table? Hmm? Oh, it's a letter. A letter for me? Why don't you tell me? Oh, it's from Uncle George. But be strong. Tear it up. If you never know what's in it, we save at least ten bucks and your conscience won't hurt you. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're probably right. But do you realize what you're asking of a woman? All right, but you'll regret it. 
Hey, what's that? Look, look, you homespun philosopher. It's a check for 25 bucks. <laughs> Uncle George is starting to pay off. Holy flying <laughs> yeah. fishes. The dead shall walk $25 again. $25 for the baby fund that would have been gone if I listened to you. Uh, uh, there's the door. Well, I'll get it. 25 bucks for Joseph. Wow. Yes? Telegram for Mrs. Chambers. Fred, it's a telegram. Shall I tear it up? <laughs> Not until you pray for it, lady. It's collect. What? Hey, uh, uh, let me see that. Collect. What is it, Fred? What does it say? Please destroy check. No funds in bank. Letter follows. <laughs> Uncle George. <laughs> Hurry up, Fred. It's almost half past eight. My shoelace is untied. Oh, well, you can finish dressing in the subway. We're 12 minutes late now. Hey, wait, now wait. There's something on the floor there with the mailbox. Here. It's a box for you. Mrs. Fred Chambers. Happy birthday from your husband. Oh, Fred. Gardenias. Oh, it's just a little cassage. Darling, you were sweet to remember. I'd forgotten all about it. I have an insurance payment due on your birthday, and they always send me a reminder. Here, <laughs> turn it off. Oh, I'll smell so nice all day. I won't be able to bear it. Fred, Fred, get back. Huh? Look, it's, it's Mr. Benson. He just pulled up in that car. <sighs> What does he want around here? Well, I don't know, but I'll get him away. Please, darling, get in the back hall. Now, now, wait. Hurry up. Get out of sight. Morning, Miss Keating. Oh, uh, oh, Mr. Benson. Step right in, Miss Keating. Bus now leaving for J.J. Benson and company. And uh, here's a little present for you. For your birthday. A few orchids. Orchids. Really? Uh, thank you, Mr. Benson, but how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, I get around. It's common talk along the waterfront. Oh, really? Come, I'm... Miss Keating, or we'll be late for work. In you go. Why, the... I'll kill him. Good morning, Fred. Oh, what's happened? Mrs. Chambers being taken for a ride? No, Milo. Mr. Chambers is being taken for a ride. Well, it's about time you got in, Ralph. Morning, Mother. You look beautiful. Never mind that. Listen to this wire. We'll cancel all orders unless shipments made this week. Arriving LaGuardia Airport today, Irene Wells. Well, say something. Ralph, you took the orders yourself, didn't you? Of course. Uh, uh, didn't I, Miss Keating? Oh, yes, Madam Benson, on April the 6th. But shipments must have been delayed. Delayed. Well, there's nothing to do now but undo the harm. Ralph, you'll take Irene Wells to dinner in the theater. Spare nothing. Well, I... Uh, and but, uh, uh, be careful of Miss Wells, Ralph. She's an ex-Follies girl who found she could make more money in dresses. Uh, Mother, <laughs> I don't think Irene Wells is my job. Not your job? You've been sitting around here doing nothing. Oh, no, Mother. Thinking, thinking. Thinking what? Well, uh, ideas. What ideas? When did you ever get an idea? Well, uh, uh, Miss Keating, you have it all in your book, haven't you? My, uh, uh ideas? In my book? I don't think... Oh. Oh, yes. You mean, you mean the idea about the perfume bar. Perfume bar? What perfume? What's that? Uh, w well, you said it would definitely pay Benson and Company to sell perfume to match each gown. With crinolines, for instance, you'd sell lilac. With sport clothes, hither. Hmm. Uh, you also suggested special perfumes for special creations. For instance, with our gown, Moonlight, Jasmine. With our yachting costume, uh, a triple extract of water lilies. Sure, sure, that's right. And with a nightgown, New Moon Hay. You got it <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's very interesting, very. Ralph, I really believe you have something. My boy, I felicitate you. Well, now, it's really as much Miss Keating's idea as mine. Oh, no, it really isn't my idea at all, Madam Benson. That is, it was Mr. I'm Ch sure you had a hand in it. You have a good head, my dear. I'm grateful. But really, Madam Benson, Mr. Now, Chambers... Now, 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 we're all working to the same end, aren't we? A bigger and better Benson. Team play. Esprit de corps. <laughs> getting awfully late. Do you mind if I leave now? In a moment. Now, let's see. Uh, where was I? You were dictating. And shall be here to... Oh, yes. And uh, shall be here to serve you. Uh... Mr. Benson's office. Miss Keating speaking. Listen, what's going on in there? It's almost 6.30. Oh, but of course, madam. The delivery will be made on time. Say, how long do you think I can stand this? Don't you trust us, madam? Sure, sure. I trust you. But I'd trust you more if that pixie wasn't in there with you. Doll, uh, madam, we have years of integrity behind us. We are very jealous of our reputation. Any attempt to doubt it will be strongly resented. All right, all right, I apologize. But when we get home tonight, remind me to show you the half Nelson and the hammerlock. They're a girl's best friend. Goodbye. Yes, Mr. Benson. 
And we shall be here to serve you, my dear Mrs. Marmont, in the same spirit we have served you for the past ten in, years. In the same spirit we have served you for the past ten years. Sign, Mr. Ralph Benson. Well, we've done pretty well today. Your mother should be pleased. <laughs> yeah. What time is it, anyway? It's 6.29, and I'd, I'd like to go if there's nothing else I can do for you. Oh, but there is. Uh, uh, sit down, Miss Keating. Well, I, I did sort of have a dinner date. Who with? With um, uh, my uncle. Oh. <laughs> you know, I had an uncle once, J.J.'s brother. He was the rip roaringest guy that ever drank and gambled his way from Maine to Mexico. We always knew he'd end on the gallows. And did he? No, he fell in love with a school teacher, settled down in Clorinda, Iowa, and raised six children. Oh, he sounded much more romantic before he met the girl. He was lots happier afterward. How long have I been here? Three months, Mr. Benson. The name is Ralph. Yes, Mr. Benson. You don't believe a man can change in three months, do you, Joan? Careful, Mr. Benson, or you'll end in Clorinda, Iowa. Uh, Joan, if I were to tell you... That's my mother. Don't answer it. Mr. Benson, if you don't mind, I I'll go now. And won't you forget your wicked old uncle and have dinner with me? You're forgetting you have a dinner date with Irene Wells. Oh, there. I'm sorry, Mr. Benson. Uh, who's that out there? Is that you, Chambers? Yes, it's me. Well, uh, come in here a minute, will you? Well. Well, Chambers, you're working late, aren't you? What are you doing that's so important? Writing myself threatening letters. <laughs> you left your burglar alarm going. Uh, that's just mother. Well, Chambers, uh, if you can't find anything more interesting to do, I have a little chore for you. Irene Wells is in from the coast, and naturally, she has to be entertained. How would you like to be the entertainer? Well, now, that's mighty white of you, Benson, old boy, but I couldn't bear to deprive you of the pleasure. Now, look, old man, I'd be glad to do it myself, but uh, confidentially, I'm after bigger game tonight. Lovely girl. My secretary. Oh. <laughs> Everything, uh, everything's working out all right, I hope. She's a little stubborn, but I think she'll break down. That's great. Good luck. Good night, Mr. Benson. Oh, now, wait. You're not leaving yet, Miss Keating. Why, Mr. Benson, did you say Irene Wells? Really, old man, there's no one in the world I'd rather take out tonight. Charming woman. I'll sell her the store. Oh, will you? I sure will. There, Miss Keating, that's the spirit of cooperation I like to see. Now, you and I can have dinner tonight. You're right, Mr. Benson, and I accept. But I warn you, I'm ravenously hungry. You shall have the works, Miss Keating. Two kinds of ice cream. Oh, uh, Chambers, uh, uh, get Miss Wells a nice dinner tonight. And after the theater, your time uh, is your own. Miss Keating will attend to the details. Uh, tickets and all that. But not the part where my time's my own. Oh, Mr. Benson. <laughs> uh, uh, isn't your buzzer ringing? Good evening, Mr. Everett. No, it couldn't possibly be mine. I left a full half hour ago. Oh, but I, I just... Uh... everybody. I've been buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. Curious. I didn't hear it, Mother. Uh, come in, Mr. Howard. Mr. Howard, this is my son, Ralph. How do you do? Yeah. He's in the firm now. Uh, Milo, Mr. Howard's leaving first thing in the morning, and I would like two models immediately in the salon. Oh, but, 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 Madam Benson, everyone has gone home. Home? At this hour? Why? Well, it's customary, Madam. Now, if I can do anything, I will... You're not going to model lingerie in my establishment. <laughs> Miss Keating, have you ever done any modeling? Why, no. Well, it isn't too difficult. Rather simple, in fact. I'm sure Miss Keating will show your new numbers most effectively. I don't think she will. What's that, Mr. Chambers? Well, I mean, well, the girl's never modeled before. It's, well, there's an art. You just can't acquire it in ten minutes. Art isn't necessarily acquired, old man. Miss Keating has certain natural advantages that some professional models don't possess. Really? I hadn't noticed. It isn't your place to notice. One can't help noticing the obvious, Mother. Well, it's obvious the girl is bow-legged. She is not bow-legged. She is bow-legged. Be quiet. Miss Keating, you may come into the dressing room. I'm sure you'll do. Yes, Madam Benson. And now, Mr. Chambers, whatever gave you the idea Miss Keating has bow-legs? Whatever gave you the idea she hasn't. <laughs> I still don't know what you're sore about, Fred. Oh, you don't, you don't. My own wife, modeling clothes for strangers. Well, you can't model for your friends. And now going out to dinner, right under my nose. I explained that to you. I'm not going out with Mr. Benson. I'm going with Mr. Howard, the buyer. It was Madam Benson's idea. I couldn't help it. And furthermore, I hope you don't think I was going to stay home all night while you carted Irene Wells around. I've got to live, too, you know. You're not going to stick me away in some apartment while you in go In some apartment? Me. Is that all this place is to you, some apartment? Two thousand is joint cost. Don't me. you dare call it a joint. Who called it a joint? You did right this minute. You did, not me. I did not. Well, then you implied it. Two thousand dollars I put into this place. Is that a joint? No, and I didn't say so. Well, then why don't you stay in it and wait for me? Why don't you wait for me? I am only acting under orders. Well, so am I. All right, but this is the last time. 
Sit down and write. What are you talking about? Your resignation. Oh, stop being a fool. I just have, and you've just become a housewife. What about Josephine? Joseph! All right, then, what about it? Now, look, right at this minute. <laughs> right at this minute, I only care about us. What good is Joseph going to be if I wind up with the Irene Wellses and you wind up with the Bensons? I am not... Oh, darling, look at us fighting when we want to love and all because you want a child with a finishing school education even before it's born. Well, from now on, I'm the breadwinner of this household, and what I say goes... You have just quit the J.J. Benson Company and without the usual two weeks' notice. But we haven't much more to go. Our overtime tonight will cut it way down. Right, or I'll spill the beans to J.J. in the morning. You wouldn't do that. To keep you, I'll spill it to her tonight. If you do, you won't keep me. What? What? Please, darling, let me have my child in my own way, not yours. You'd... you'd leave me? Darling, I've... I've hurt you. Why, you're... you're shaking. Why shouldn't I? Joseph was almost an orphan. <laughs> Kiss me, darling. Now, come on, Slowpoke, to work. For Joseph. Josephine. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars Dick Powell and Joan Blundell will bring us Act Two of Model Wife. Tonight, we've asked Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, to give you a few flashes from the Hollywood fashion front. Say, Libby, you're looking pretty stylish yourself tonight. But I've never thought that uh, yellow and red... <laughs> That's something I wanted to talk about tonight, Mr. Bruick. Red for trimmings and accessories is just about the smartest color this spring. But does it go with everything, Libby? Red goes with just about every color there is, Mr. Bruick. In other words, red is right. Well, come to think of it, I saw Dorothy Lemour the other day wearing a sort of yellow suit and carrying a great big red handbag. Shh. That's where I got the idea for this outfit I'm wearing. Oh, well, that's nothing, Libby. Lots of women admire the clothes the screen stars wear. And they take Hollywood's tip about even more important matters, too. Complexion care, for example. Women everywhere have taken the screen star's beauty tip about using Lux toilet soap every single day. Well, that's only natural, Mr. Ruick. Because women realize that Hollywood screen stars just have to have nice skin. And they know that if Lux Toilet Soap works for the stars, it'll work for them. It's mild and it's pure. And Lux Toilet Soap has rich, active lather, too. Active lather that removes stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt, thoroughly. Gives skin protection it needs. Thank you, Libby. You know, once a woman starts using Lux Toilet Soap, she understands why famous screen stars like Dorothy L'Amour say... Lux soap's a wonderful beauty aid. It helps keep skin lovely. Try the complexion soap that nine out of ten screen stars use. Let Lux toilet soap help you keep your skin appealingly soft and smooth, the way you like it to be. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of Model Wife, starring Dick Powell as Fred Chambers and Joan Blundell as Joan Chambers. Joan went out for the evening with Mr. Howard, the buyer, but strange to relate, she's returning home with Mr. Benson, the boss. Mr. Benson is very gay. As a matter of fact, he's so gay that Joan has to support him by the arm. Excuse me. <laughs> this is my apartment. Good night, Mr. Benson. Safe at home. Benson service at his best. Rescuing damsels from boards. A good customer, Mr. Howard, but the grandfather of all boards. I appreciate the rescue, Mr. Benson. It's been a lovely evening, but it's really quite late. A and good I'd... soldier never relinquishes his post until relieved. Call out the guard. What ho! The guard. The guard, I think, is in bed. Then you'll have to take over, Joan. Fort March. Mr. Benson, you can't come in. I am in. Company, halt. Uh, excuse me. 
Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Benson, it's nearly three o'clock, and I have to get up awfully early in the morning. For what? Come to work at noon if you want to. Come at four o'clock. I won't be there. Oh, dear. Ralph. Ralph, Ralph please. What, what was that name again? What was... What name, Mr. Benson? If I heard correctly, you called me Ralph. Oh. You realize it's the first time you ever called me that? No more guard duty for you, Joan. Instead, I shall fire a 21-gun salute over your head. Just one gun, please. It is late, you know. One gun, then. I... What was that? What was... What? I heard something go... Psst. Oh. <laughs> uh, I guess it was the radiator in the bedroom. Uh, will you excuse me a moment, Mr. Benson? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Aram. 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 Fred, Aram. was that you hissing? Aram. Yes, and why shouldn't I? Is that what you call entertaining a buyer? He joined us at dinner. I couldn't do anything about it. Well, I can. Where are you going? I'm going to throw that toy soldier out oh, of here. Fred, don't. I'll get rid of him in a minute. Fred, please. Well, make it snappy. And I'd also like a little explanation about those tickets you got for me and Miss Wells last row in the balcony. A fine place to make an impression. Now, Fred. Get that guy out of all here. All right, all right. I'll give him two minutes to leave. I have an appointment with his mother at nine. She'll be interested in how I got along with Irene Wells. I'm sorry about the tickets, darling. I thought maybe from there she wouldn't like the show and decide to go home early. The lady loved the show, and so did I. Well, you needn't bite my head off. Oh, don't stop to argue. Get that guy out of here. Come on, George, quitting time. Let's beat it. No, I can't do it, Fred. I'm working late tonight. No, don't be a slave, my friend. I gotta. Anyway, I get overtime, and that's something. Joe, a man like you in the payroll department should be above money troubles. Simply give yourself a raise. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Like flying to the moon. All you gotta do to get a raise is to be in with Ralphie boy, like that Keating dame. What about that Keating dame? Oh, nothing. I just gave her a $10 raise, that's all. J.J.'s orders on account of Keating gave Ralphie boy some new idea about perfume. New idea about perfume. Yeah. You give Ralphie boy an idea he likes, and you'll get a raise, too. Yeah. Yeah, I bet I would. Fred. Oh, Fred, you've been waiting long. Mr. Benson kept me late. Yes, come on, we'll take the bus. Darling, darling, I could hardly wait to tell you. The most wonderful thing happened. I know, happened. I know. You got a raise for putting ideas in Mr. Benson's head. Oh, you know... Oh, Fred, let me explain, will you? I tried to tell them it was your idea, but I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Aren't you even listening? Oh, darling, believe me, I felt awful about it, but it just got harder and harder to tell them. Sure, 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 forget it. Will you stop sulking, please? Hello, folks. Hello, Milo. Hello, Milo. Say, uh, are you coming tonight? Coming where? What, to the theater? It's Wednesday, bank night. Well, that's, that's right, we go every Wednesday. Would you be interested in going tonight, dear? It's entirely up to you, darling. I'm putty in your hands. Well, Emily and I are going. You never can tell when you might win, you know. Oh, uh, we never win anything. I think we'll skip it tonight, Milo. Thanks, just the same. Fred, are you listening to me? I said I know it was your idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you set the alarm? Oh, Fred, please don't go to sleep. I want to explain this thing. In the first place, I tr said I tried to tell Ralph it was your idea, but you see... He... What's that? What's what? You tried to tell What? I said I tried to tell him it was your idea. Tell who? Ralph Benson. You said Ralph. Well, what if I did? Don't you call Madam Benson J.J.? Now, that's different. Look, Joan, don't let's start this again. Who started it? I merely said that... Oh, all right. I confess all. I'm passionately in love with Ralph Benson. I lead a double life. Every night when you're asleep, I steal to a side. Satisfied? Perfectly. Then pull out the light, please. I'd like to sleep. The phone's ringing. I hear it. Oh. Answer it. I will not... Hello. Hello, Fred. This is Milo. Hello, Fred, Milo. Fred, I'm at the theater. Uh, they're calling your name. You just won $200. I won what? Uh, $200. 200 Yes, but you've got to get over here right away. You've only got three minutes. Oh, I'll be right there. $200. Where's my pants? Fred, what is it? But it's bank night. $200. Oh, Fred. My pants, my pants. Put on a bathrobe. Bathrobe? Yeah, here, your shoes. Oh, quickly, Fred. Now, don't rush me. We've only got three oh, minutes. Oh, $200. That's all we need for Josephine. Come on, I'll go with you. You're not dressed. Well, either you. Uh, it's just around the corner. I'm coming just to say, where's my robe? Hurry, hurry, on, darling, hurry. <laughs> Hello, sir. This is Officer Harnahan reporting. 
Nothing to report, Sarge. Everything's nice and quiet. Come on, Joan. Come on. Well, for the love. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll call you back, Sarge. Two screwballs just ran past in bathrobes. Stop. Stop. In the name of the law. Stop. Stop. Mr. Chambers. Is Mr. Chambers here yet? Let me through, please. I've got to get inside the theater. Let me through. Fred Posh! Mr. Posh! Fred Chambers. Just a minute, lady. Where do you think you're going? We're going in the theater. Oh, no, you're not. Not in them clothes. Now, listen, officer. Disturbing the peace. Making a spectacle oh, of yourself. Officer, Come you along. Officer, you know what you're doing. Let me go. Time is up. Sorry, Mr. Chambers. Next number, please. Oh, Joan. We didn't make it. Fred. I think I'm going to cry. Lady, it won't help you one bit. Come on, you. I don't know why, but my side of the dish seems to get dry quicker than yours. That's ah, no job for a man, anyway. When we're rich, we'll get one of those electric dish dryers. Not if we keep on paying $10 fines for disturbing the peace. Josephine's not going to forget that in a hurry. Funny, isn't it, how my side is also a little cleaner? Well, Emily Post says always leave a little on the plate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Open up, I command you, in the name of Sweet Charity. Who is that? Sweet Charity. He wants to come in. Is anybody home in there? Yes, Mr. Benson. What did you say oh, that for? I wasn't thinking. I'm always saying at the office. Oh, where's something I can throw? Give me that dish. No, you can't do that. I can if you don't spoil my oh, aim. please, Fred, go over to the Everett's. I, I promise you I'll be rid of him in five minutes. How am I going to get out? Across the fire escape. The fire escape? Me, the husband, getting away on the fire escape. How do you like that? Yes, Fred, go and talk to Milo. All right, but this is the last time I'm going to be shoved out of my own home. Milo, can you hear anything? They're sitting down, I think. Well, why don't they say something? Uh, uh, Shh, <clears throat> listen. I, uh, I wasn't expecting you, Mr. Benson. Oh, I just happened to be passing by. Now, why couldn't I make it sound convincing? As a matter of fact, I've planned this visit for weeks. Joan, I, I brought something for you. Oh, you did, huh? What is it? Mr. Benson, I have a, a dinner date. I'm expecting someone almost any minute. And I am the someone. Milo, I'm going back in there and sock him. Oh, now keep your head, boy. Keep your head. I got it over at Francois's on the avenue just a few minutes ago. Why, it's an engagement ring. Did you hear that? The guy's trying to marry my wife. <laughs> Fred, Fred, that's a compliment. Why, J.J. would practically be your mother-in-law. <laughs> I, I told Francois I wasn't quite sure I'd need it. In fact, I'm not quite sure at all. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Francois assured me I had nothing to worry about. A man like you, he said, a girl would be crazy to turn you down. Oh, I'll kill him. My, it's a beautiful ring. I'm going in and strangle him. Let me go, Milo. No, 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 you're going to stay right in here and keep your job. Lots of girls would give the right eye to marry you, Francois said. What do you think? Does Francois know what he's talking about? It's, it's beautiful. And after you leave, I'll cry, but it's impossible. I'm in love, desperately in love, Mr. Benson. Oh, well, could you at least stop calling me Mr. Benson? Yes, well, and I'm sorry, and someday you'll find a girl, a very lovely girl, I'm sure, and, and you'll be very happy. Well, I guess this will teach Francois not to be overconfident. Good night, Miss Keating. Good night. He's going, Fred. Yeah, and now the lord and master of the house can go back by the fire escape. <laughs> to him, mm. Fred. His tummy's so mm. full, he's purring. Yeah, it won't be long now. If you hadn't been putting slugs in here again. Mm. Now, who do you suppose that is? Well, no matter who it is, I'm not getting out tonight. I've been on that fire escape so much today that the pigeons are building nests on me. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, I'll open the peephole. Oh. Who is it? It's Madam Benson. Madam Benson? Pigeons, here I come. <laughs> Just a moment. Is it all right? Okay, let her in. Oh, uh, uh, come in, Madam Benson. Good evening, Miss Keating. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, here. Uh, please take this chair. It's the most comfortable one. I prefer to be uncomfortable. Sit down, my dear. Thank you. I, uh, uh, well, I'm surprised. So am I, in my own fashion. When did you see my son last? On Tuesday. I, I think it was Tuesday. Go on. Uh, well, uh, it was after office hours. I know. He came here, stayed a few minutes, and left. His chauffeur reports to me occasionally. Oh, I, that's dreadful. Oh, forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry I said that, Madam Benson. What did Ralph want? Well, he, he had some idea about merchandising. He, he wanted me to look up some data for him. What's your first name, child? Joan. Why do you lie to me, Joan? You think of me as a hard-bitten old woman, don't you? Oh, don't deny it. 
but I came here humbly. All I want is the truth about Ralph. He saw you Tuesday night. He's been on a spree... Uh, <clears throat> he's been away for three days. <laughs> I'm no fool. I have eyes. It was because of you, Joan. What happened? He asked me to marry him. And you turned him down? Yes. It isn't a coincidence that since he's known you, he's been a different man. I've been proud of him. Why did you say no, Joan? I'm sorry. Is there another man? Well, in a way, yes. You, uh, plan to marry soon? Well, I, I... Uh... Can't afford it, huh? Why? Oh, what nothing. do you mean? Good night, Joan, and thank you. Good night, Madam Benson. Oh, by the way, that picture over there, that's Mr. Chambers in our office, isn't it? Good night, dear. <laughs> today and Fred. Well, well, do step into my office, dear, and do pardon the mess. You know how it is on moving day. Fred, what on earth are you doing? Well, would you look at this picture? J.J. Benson, employee's annual excursion to Barry Mountain. <laughs> Funny how we both photograph cross-eyed. Fred, what were you doing so long in J.J.'s office? J.J. J.J. Oh, yes, I remember. Quaint old relic. I used to work for until I was fired. Fred. Oh, but we've nothing to worry about, dear. We can always fall back on Uncle George. Oh, darling. But she couldn't have fired you, why? Why did Lincoln free the slaves? Madam Benson is a humanitarian. Even though she did say her son could do my work more efficiently. Well, come on, get your things and let's clear out of this concentration camp. Darling, darling, let's think this thing over before we do anything foolish. What's that? Well, one of us has to keep working, at least until you find another job and start earning money again. Please, Fred, be sensible. You mean you intend staying on here with young Prince Charming while I stand on the sidelines and cheer? You talk like you don't trust me. It's that weak-kneed werewolf I don't trust. And furthermore, if you don't quit now, I'm going to bust this thing wide open. I'll tell her we're married and plenty and more. And then what? I'll be fired, too, and we'll be set back for months or years. Oh, forget your pride, dear, for Joseph. Please, darling, that's for me. I've got to go. Joan, don't answer. I've got to. Please, dear. We'll talk about it over when we get home tonight. <laughs> Good morning. 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 You might have telephoned you'd be out all night. I waited up for you. Well, that's very considerate. Very considerate indeed. Where are you going all dressed up? I'm going to work. Hmm. That's right. Work. I remember now. Make a note of that, Miss Keating. It reminds me to look for a job when I get up this afternoon. Well, that's one thing we're not going to worry about. We'll manage. We'll just explain gently to Josephine that you'll have to wait a bit. Josephine. Where's the budget book? What about the budget book? Well, I... I... Got to make an entry in it. Fred, that's not your money. Or mine either. We can't touch that. Well, suppose I told you it's already touched. Suppose I told you I gambled away every cent of it. More besides, suppose I told you I'll be changing my address to the county jail unless I make good the checks I drew. What would you think of that? When did this take place? Uh, last night. I see. Well, you, you won't have to change your address. If you'd quit yesterday when I asked you, this wouldn't have happened. Still harping on that, are you? You with your ten-cent pride trying to make a noise like a husband and then going out and acting like a spoiled brat. The big, strong protector of the home baking into his baby's bank. The breadwinner, the provider. Too proud for his wife to work, but not too proud to rob a baby bank. What's wrong with a guy trying to make enough money so he doesn't have to stand by watching the whole Benson family trying to marry his wife? If we could afford it, I'd have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I am a baby, and our home can go as long as the chamber's flag keeps flying in the breeze. You'll forgive me if I've had enough. And if you don't forgive me, I've still had enough. Coffee's on the top shelf. There's no cream. I'm going to work. Give my love to the Bensons. Here's something you overlooked. Your friend, the stork. <laughs> <laughs> After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille will present Dick Powell and Joan Blundell in Act Three of Model Wife. And now let's listen in for just a moment on the Johnson household. It's late, but Mrs. Johnson has no idea of going to sleep yet. Any minute now, her young daughter Anne will be coming home from her first big high school dance. Is that you, Anne? Hmm? Oh, hello, Mother. You still awake? Well, you look happy, dear. Did you have a nice time? Oh, Mother, it was simply super. I danced every dance. And, Mother, you know what Jim Duncan said? Mm, what, dear? 
Jim said he wished he could go on dancing all night with me. You know what else he said? He said, gee, Ann, you're sweet. Of course Jim loves to dance with Ann. She's a typical American girl, charming and fresh and really sweet. And lots of that freshness and charm, of course, is due to Ann's wise upbringing. Her mother says, From the time she was small, I've taught Ann that unless a girl is truly dainty always, no other charm counts. And it's so easy always to be sure. Anne wouldn't think of going out on a date without her Lux soap bath. She calls her daily Lux toilet soap bath her beauty bath. We're both keen about Lux soap's wonderful active lather. It leaves skin beautifully fresh and sweet. Yes, fastidious women love the way a Lux soap beauty bath makes daintiness sure. You see, Lux soap has active lather that carries away perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt leaves skin really sweet and fresh. And here's something else. You'll love the delicate perfume Lux Toilet Soap has, the light, clinging fragrance it leaves on your skin. Hollywood screen stars, you know, say their complexion soap makes a truly luxurious bath soap, too. And it's economical as well. Lux Toilet Soap is hard milled, so you can use it down to the last thin sliver. And this fragrant white soap costs so little. Why don't you begin to use Lux Toilet Soap for your daily beauty bath, too? Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Model Wife. <laughs> Several weeks have gone by, and the Model Wife is preparing to become a model divorcee. In the corner restaurant, Fred reads a lengthy legal document to Milo Everett. No old men by these presents, blah, 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 blah. That the uh, party of the first part, known as John Chambers, blah, blah. Oh, here we are, Milo. <laughs> Frederick Chambers summoned to appear in superior court. Hmm, plain ordinary court wasn't good enough for her. Before Judge Schwiegelwasser at 10 a.m. October 10th. And what am I supposed to say to Judge Schlegel, Schlegel, who's this? Well, you're my proxy, Milo. Just tell him I didn't like his name, so I went out of town. Oh, and you're not even going to contest the divorce? Why should I? Who ever heard of laws changing a woman's mind? Oh, I don't like it, I tell you. The thought of you two children breaking up distresses me. Here, Milo, have another one. Greatest cure for distress known to man. I was once distressed. Saw black specks before my eyes and had to walk upstairs backward. Hmm, look at me now. I can't. You keep dirling like a whirvish. I mean, you're, you're, you're undulating like a... Stop it, will you? Hiya, Chambers. Hi, Joe. Say, am I supposed to congratulate you on your new job? When are you sailing and why? Eight bells. Want to come along? To China? Ho, oh, ho. Not for twice the tea they're giving you. I once did publicity for a South American revolution, and that was enough. Anyway, good luck. Thanks, old man. Oh, so that's it. To get her back, you're going to risk your neck to make a lot of money. But you know, I kind of envy you sailing to China. The mysterious Orient, land of adventure. Land of 400 bucks a week for six months, if you last that long. Freddy, my mind's made up. Now, I've been in Madame Benson's clutches for 18 years. I'm going with you. You, Milo? Oh, what would Emily say? Oh, she's had so much to say all her life. A little more wouldn't matter. <laughs> well, let's get going. Without saying goodbye to Madame? Oh, that's right. We can't leave Benson's like that. We must make a gesture of farewell. Gesture of farewell. That's it. Oh, only it's too bad Madam will be too busy this afternoon. It's grand opening of Ralphie's new perfume department, you know. Oh, grand opening, huh? Well, Milo, why are we dallying? There's men's work to be done. To Madam Benson's. Huh? Here we are, Milo. J.J. Benson, couturier. Enter, my friend. Wait a minute. Will they let us in with that cat you bought? That's not a cat, my friend. That's a little skunk. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right, then. Come on. Close your eyes, Miss Kendall. Imagine yourself clad in old lace, the fragrance of lavender floating through a moonlit garden. Just a and... minute. <laughs> Something has come into the garden. Good afternoon, madam. Afternoon, Ralphie. Why, look, it's a... Oh, let me out of here. Well, what's wrong, madam? Can a little fur coat take a walk if it wants to? <laughs> Listen, you hoodlums, take that skunk out of here. 
Wait till J.J. catches you. Ah, 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 now, you better listen to your mama. The customer's always right, and we're customers. The biggest bottle of perfume, if you please. How much is this, my good man? $35. Oh, so sorry it slipped. Oh, uh, here's a nice one. Look, Chambers, if I wasn't a gentleman, I... So sorry it slipped. The little gentleman accepts your apology, my lord. Detectives, grab these men. No, you don't. Hey, now, wait, this is a free country. Yeah, here, let go. Free speech. Take him into Madam Benson's office. Let go. Let, let go. go. This is an outrage. I tell you, it's an outrage. Perhaps you're aware, Mr. Chambers, that I could have you placed in jail for a long time. Leaving a perfectly clear field for your son to marry my wife. Not bad, Madam Benson. Say that again. Why? Don't tell me the idea has never occurred to Madam. It hasn't. How long have you and Joan been married? We spent our honeymoon weekend two years ago working overtime on your fall inventory sale. When did you separate? About 12 hours after you fired me. Any more questions? No? Well, I'll ask you some. Madam Benson, has it ever occurred to you what a wicked old fluff you really are? <laughs> well, if it hasn't, you ought to stop sometime and find out what the people around here think of you. I don't mean the old fossils who buy your clothes. I mean the people who sew and design and sell them, the little people. Connie Gordon, who you fired for supporting her husband when he was out of work. Ike, your $16 a week elevator man who smiles like an angel at your swank clients and hates you. Milo, who's had everything decent knocked out of him after 18 years under your thumb. You know, I could go on all day, but what's the use? You're too far gone. But one of these days, Madam is going to fall off her little niche. Smack on her million-dollar bustle, and I hope that day is soon. Good day. Sorry if I haven't disturbed you. Miss Keating is staying for dinner, Henry. Now let me know when my mother gets home. Very good, sir. Joan. Yes? Why didn't you tell me before about, about your being married? What difference would it make? In six months, I'll be divorced. Reno could untangle you in six weeks if you'd let me help you. I'm interested in what happens after that. After that, I'll be free as the wind and happy as a lark. Joan. Please, Ralph. You're very sweet, but don't say it tonight. I warn you, I'll say it twice as loud tomorrow night. Good evening. Oh, good evening, Madam Benson. What kept you so late, darling? Picking up broken bottles? Yes, and a few other surprises as well. Joan, your husband and I had a very interesting monologue this afternoon. He's a more positive character than I thought. I'm afraid I'm not much interested in his character, Mrs. Benson. I'm getting a divorce. Really? I'm quite relieved. In that case, his going away can't matter very much to you. Going away? Yes, to some outlandish place. Uh, Milo told me about it. China, I think. China? But why China? Heaven only knows. He's accepted some idiotic job that'll probably cost him his life, but pays him handsomely. Well, good riddance, I say. Come, let's go into dinner. Wait, Mrs. Benson. He, why, he, he couldn't do a thing like that. Look at me, child. It's bad enough for old fools like me to make mistakes. Young people mustn't. His boat sails in an hour. But he can't. He, can't, he mustn't. Joan, I... do you love him? No, Then but... let him go. No. He's not going to kill himself over me. Come along, my dear. Ralph will drive you to your apartment. Ralph will not. What? You heard me, Ma. I refuse to be an accomplice in slitting my own throat. All right, then I'll drive her. Come on, child. I haven't driven in 20 years. I suppose you've noticed that. There he is. That's Milo's car. He's, he's putting the grips in the back. Go get him, Joan. Fred! Fred! Oh, hello. Fred, what are you doing? Why do you always have to make things so tough? Tell me the truth about this China business. Are you sure you'd recognize the truth if you heard it? I can tell you why you're going. You didn't know what it was all about when you took the job, and now you're ashamed to back out. And why is the ex-Mrs. Chambers-to-be so concerned about what I do? Believe me, my sweet, I don't give a hoot what you do. I only hate to see a man I once respected making a fool of himself because of some melodramatic whim. Don't be reactionary, Mrs. Chambers. Where would you be today if Columbus's ex-wife talked him out of traveling? <laughs> what about your, your food over there? Chow Mein always did make you bilious, remember? Oh, my stomach's been much better these last few weeks. Hello, Joan. Here's the last grip, Fred. Pile it on. Let's get going. Fred, please don't go. Now look out or I'll miss the boat. Miss it, then. Fred, remember what you said to me. Here we are fighting when we should be loving. I remember that. That's all I have remembered since you went so far away from me. Far? I've been a couple of blocks away all the time. No, you haven't. You've been on the other side of the world, and it's time you came home. No. No, it wouldn't work. We'd be right back where we started. Fred. Sure we would. 
bills and budgets and you're working so that we could have a baby with a silver spoon and a fancy wardrobe. No, let's, let's forget it. We'll try it my way this time. Goodbye, Joan. Goodbye. Don't forget the picture postcard. Hop in, Milo. Joan, is he going? Yes. Over my dead body, he's going. Get in my car. Mrs. Benson. Get in, quick. What are you going to do? He can't make that boat if his back wheels fold up, can he? What? Watch it, darling. I'll make a cripple out of that car in one fell swoop. Ah, oh, Fred, you fixed the bank. Sure. The day you left, I fixed it. Oh, darling, I love starting over. It's like being on a honeymoon again. Joan. Joan. Maybe we should answer it. Ah, oh, let her ring. Might be J.J. I told her not to call me at these ungodly hours. Maybe it's important. Who's the master of this house? You are, my lord. Okay, I'll answer it. Hello? Hello? Western Union calling. Is Mr. Chambers there? Yes, this is Mr. Chambers. We have a telegram for you. Collect. All right, go ahead. Please rush $200. My wife is going to have a baby. Signed, Uncle George. Take an answer. Collect. Sorry, so is mine. <laughs> As the curtain falls, here come Dick Powell and his model wife, Joan Blondell, back to our microphone. It's no secret, of course, that they answer to the name of Mr. and Mrs. Dick Powell, but I'm going to tell a secret. We think they gave a fine performance. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Don't you think there might be a place for a sequel to Model Wife? Yes, a uh, model wife deserves a model husband, Joan. <laughs> You're playing right into her hand, C.B. I can just see it in lights on the marquee now. Model husband. <laughs> You're elected, Dick. Dick? Oh, I hadn't thought of him for the part. Every morning at breakfast, he pops the, props the newspaper up on the table. Oh, my. Uh-oh. You're not helping things a bit, C.B. Hey, wait a minute, though. Joan, I have an idea. What is it? What about Mr. DeMille for that part? Say, that's not bad. How long have you been married, Mr. DeMille? Thirty-nine years. <whistles> Ever forget an anniversary? Hmm. Just once. I was under ether. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. And while we're on the subject of good memory... I think this would be an excellent time to tell you something new I've discovered about Lux Soap. It's just this. You don't realize how much you depend on it until you don't have any. I've used Lux Soap for years in caring for my complexion, and a day or so ago when I discovered there wasn't any on hand, well, believe me, it didn't take me long to fix that. Naturally, Joan. It doesn't take anybody long to get Lux Soap if it's missing. Well, C.B., before we go home, we'd all like to hear about next week's play. What is it? It's Virginia City, Dick. And that guarantees just about a thrill a minute. We'll have the same star who was in the Warner Brothers picture, Errol Flynn. And with him, we'll present Martha Scott. The play is a roaring drama of the days when gold was king of the West and Virginia City was the capital of adventure. There, a great battle of the war between the states was fought. A battle behind the scenes for control of the glittering yellow metal. But for one man and one girl, the prize was greater than gold. And the play Virginia City is their story. And you've got a swell cast, C.B. Joan and I'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. You're a model, model couple. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Errol Flynn and Martha Scott in Virginia City. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Included in tonight's play were Fred Mackay as Ralph, Verna Felton as Madame Benson, Chester Clute as Milo, and Edward Marr, Paula Francis, Julie Bannon, Stanley Farrar, Edwin Max, Lou Merrill, Gloria Blondell, and Adele Rowland. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy.
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.